This is the connector that goes straight to the rail here. So this is uh, essentially takes everything that's going on on this board and transmits it to these pins, which then goes to the tablet. Hey everyone, the okayist gamer here. Today I wanted to take you through a short teardown of the One X Player 2 controller. As I'm going through this, I'm going to be describing what I see, talking about some potential repairs, and explaining what the components are for. Some of the tools that we're going to need for this teardown is going to be a number 000 Phillips screwdriver, a pair of tweezers, a guitar pick, and a pry tool pick. Check the video description for the different timestamps for the different components. All right, let's jump into it. There's four screws at the back you just need to take out. I've already removed mine, so take those out. And then you're gonna take your pick and you're gonna come in here and you're just gonna go until everything uh, clicks open. Now, like I said, I've already unclicked mine. So I'm just gonna take it apart. There's a piece here that you can see is loose. Uh, just for this part, uh, this is just the button that uh, you press to remove the controller. So I'm just going to stick it back in here and we'll set the shell aside. So on the AOK Zoe uh, that has a similar setup, they've actually put in some grease in here. So I'm guessing they will do the same. Uh, if not, you can get some electronic lubricants and just put a little bit in there so that it uh, smooths it out and doesn't end up wearing it down. So we'll go ahead and take it apart. So it looks fairly straightforward. Um, there's just a few ribbon cables and a few screws. So we're going to start off and we're going to remove... I'm going to try actually a different size here. Okay, so this seems to work better. So I switched over to, instead of a uh, using the double zero, I switched over to a triple zero Phillips head. So there's another screw just at the top here. So if you end up needing to change out your trigger assembly, it's extremely straightforward. So this just lifts up and you've got it out. Now I'm just going to grab a another pick. All right, so I like to use these plastic picks just to make sure you're not bridging any contacts if you're using metal picks, so I'm just going to use this one, as well as a pair of pliers here that are some tiny needle nose pliers. And I'm just using a iFixit kit that has pretty well everything that you'll need. So it's just a pair of tweezers here. They're not sharp or anything. I have another pair that's a little bit sharper, so these ones are a little bit safer for ribbon cables. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to prop up this little flap here. So that just lifts. So you got to be gentle. Um, I was a little bit rough there. Put that aside. Okay. So the shoulder button or bumper. Uh, if you remove it, just keep in mind that there's a little pin here. I'm not sure if you can see that. Uh, a little metal pin here. So sometimes that can come out. So just uh, be mindful if that falls out to uh, this is just where it goes. Um, another thing that I will highlight here is if you ever have an issue with your bumper not working, it's just a tiny little uh, tactile switch that... Um, and I'm going to compare it to the AOK Zoe just because that's my other device to reference. Um, there have been users that have had this break off, uh, maybe if you're pressing the button too hard. So just keep in mind to not, not button mash too much and you should be fine. Okay, so let's move on to the joystick. So there's three screws here. 
holding the module in. Now normally I recommend doing a little differently than I'm doing here with the screws, put them in a container. Um, but I have done this so many times that uh, I know where they go. Okay, you know what, actually I'm gonna take the ribbon cable out. So this ribbon cable, it's a little different than others. It comes from the back here instead of from the front. I'm just gonna lift that just in preparation. Okay, so the one thing with the joystick is if you look on the other side, I also have a cap on, so it's a little bit thicker, but uh, even without the cap, it doesn't come out very easily. Uh, you have to basically take it at an angle to remove the actual plastic cap. So I'm going to leave it in and actually just remove the stick off of the cap, leaving the cap behind. Just gonna make sure this is still up and then we should be able to remove this just looks like it's caught uh, where's the tweezers okay so now we've got the module out So this one is, they've changed it in the production units, but I'm not sure if we're gonna be able to zoom in here with my camera. Um, but I can take a picture later and, and uh, upload it. Uh, over here it says Alps Alpine, so this is an Alp uh, module. So changing it out to a Hall Effect should be quite, quite simple. Basically getting the parts, and then we just need to remove these two screws. Now I'll make one note just for for the sake of uh, if you're coming back. It, it probably doesn't matter, but uh, this little white piece is pointing towards the the side with just one. So just um, if you're looking to align it the same way when you put it back. Just tiny little screws, so just try not to lose those. And then the module just lifts straight up. So I've had others asking me for a part number. Uh, unfortunately, there there's nothing on these that have anything written. Um, all it says over here on the one side is just Alps Alpine. It's very small. You're not going to be able to, to make it out on the camera here. So we'll set this aside. And for the sake of me remembering, I'm just gonna set it the way it was. Okay, we'll move on here. So just to point out what some of the components are, um, this here is your vibration. So that is just soldered to the board. So if we remove the board, we're just gonna have to be mindful to remove this with it. This is the connector that goes straight to the rail here. So this is uh, essentially takes everything that's going on on this board and transmits it to these pins, which then goes to the tablet or main body. So there's just a few screws for the board, uh, for the rail. There's one over here. Not sure if you can see that right, right here. And there's another one over here. So we'll just quickly remove those. side nope. all right 
right, so now the rail can lift out. And I should be able to remove the ribbon cable. So you're gonna see a loose part here. So this is something you're just gonna also make sure you don't lose, is there's a tiny little spring here and this little box. This is what applies the pressure on that little button that we have uh, that we put in here. So that's what uh, pushes it back out. So we're just gonna set this aside. And just be careful not to lose it. <clears throat> All right, now that we've got that out, we should be able to uh, take the board out. So there's one screw down here at the bottom. This one looks a little bit shorter than the rest, so I'm just going to put it aside. There's the bottom. And I believe that's it. So we'll lift this up. And we should be able to remove the rumble here. Yep. Okay, so this is the board if you wanted to see a close up of it. And I'm working with uh, the left analog here, so they should each be labeled a little bit different. Okay, so here, hopefully the camera can focus. Let's see if I can manually focus it. These are the LEDs. So they are static color. Uh, it's not RGB, so you can't change them. Um, and they come with orange <clears throat> membrane. It's uh, it's actually the same part as the AOK Zoe. Uh, so they should be replaceable if you happen to be able to find parts for an AOK Zoe, but not the 1X player too. So this basically just rests on here. Sometimes these, over time, they get worn out and you may need to replace it. So what all what typically happens, uh, and I've had it happen on PlayStation 4 controls, is this little ring around here will just get a tear, and then this thing has a normal, like a nice clicky kind of feel that will start to feel like spongy or very soft. So it's very, uh, very easy to replace. Um, there are times too when sometimes the conductivity will stop, stop uh, making contact, so these little pads. Um, I have replaced them before, uh, where you just take a pad out and you can buy replacement pads and just uh, secure it in with some, with some adhesive. Okay, aside from that, there's not much to the controller. They're, they're quite simple. Um, this would be your, what button is that? Your home button? Just at the bottom here and this would be your back button so if these get damaged it looks like you can uh, desolder the four legs and put another tactile switch so overall it's looking very uh, repairable so we'll just set this aside okay so this is just the little housing. It's, it is different than I saw in the AOK Zoe, and I believe it'd be different than the One X Player Mini. Um, so this one seems to have more points that it's plastic soldered down, which is good. Uh, there was some users uh, with the AOK Zoe that the ring, ring had become loose, so this does seem a lot more secure of a solution. Here's the D-pad if you're curious. And it looks like these buttons are removable. I'm not gonna bother taking them out. It's not really much benefit, uh, but you would just pull it up and it would unclick on off of these two little pins. And this one, same kind of thing, two pins there. And uh, the main button. So that's pretty well it for the controllers. They're, they're quite simple. Um, I can show you close-up of the rail if you're curious. Um, the other thing that I'll just point out while you're putting these together is just be very careful these little pads. Uh, if you push and it's uh, not aligned proper, sometimes these little 
these little connections can get lifted or break, uh, which it is repairable, but it's it's not it's not easy. Um, so this is the rail the pins. It's it's pretty straightforward. Reminds me a lot of the Nintendo Switch. Um, so th this will be slightly different than the production unit. I'm I'm gonna guess they made some modifications either to the size of these plastics, the size of this little guy here or possibly the metal on the uh, tablet part of the unit to make them a little bit tighter. Uh, the one that I have, there, there was a little bit of play, but it's really, it's, it's fairly tight. I've never had worries about it falling off. Um, but I'm, I'd be curious to see when I get my uh, production controller in uh, that I purchased uh, to see what the difference is. Okay, well, if you guys have any questions, uh, just send me a message on Discord. Or if you uh, are watching this on YouTube, just leave a comment and I'll do my best to get, to get back to you. Um, and if anyone has ideas on modding these LED lights, um, I'd be happy to hear them. Uh, I mean, the orange is fine, but uh, I just like to mod things. So I'd be curious to hear what uh, others' ideas are on changing the color to maybe blue or aqua blue or just basically any color you choose okay well that's that's going to do it for this video so if you guys have any questions uh, like i said just leave them in the comments and thanks for watching